Gotham Knight was one of the early DC animated movies that would come out direct-to-video in the mid-2000s. It was released specifically in 2008 and is meant to bridge the gap between Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. If it's a similar niche as the Animatrix does, Gotham Knight was a collaboration between Warner Brothers and multiple Japanese animation studios. The movie has a very stacked cast, some of which aren't strangers to DC TV and movies. We have Jason Marsden, Scott Menville, George Newbern, Hinden Walsh, Corey Burton, Rob Paulson, Kevin Michael Richardson, Will Friedel, and of course, Kevin Conroy. The score is also split between multiple people for this movie. The one most DC fans are probably familiar with is Christopher Drake. He's worked on a variety of both video games and a few animated projects as well. Kevin Manthe scores a few vignettes in this. He's known mostly for his work on Ben 10 and Invader Zim. And we have Robert J. Crowell who did the score most notably for Angel and most of the Scooby-Doo animated features from the last decade or so. The movie is the first DC animated film to have an entirely original story. It's an anthology consisting of six somewhat connected vignettes. Each vignette highlights a major aspect of Batman's character. As mentioned earlier, the story is also meant to bridge the gap between Batman Begins and The Dark Knight, though I wouldn't say it's closely tied into those films. The movie does use some characters and a few settings brought in from Batman Begins and some that would be mentioned later on in The Dark Knight, but there's plenty of aspects to this film that don't really reflect what the Nolan duo of movies at the time were consisting of. The stories are written by a mix of both comic authors and screenwriters. It hasn't been officially stated by anyone involved with the film, but this movie reminds me a lot of the Batman Black and White series. Similar to that book, the stories are somewhat connected to each other, but you can easily get away with watching or just reading one on its own, and it also helps highlight a very cool art style and a specific writer. The first story we have on the docket is Have I Got a Story for You? This is animated by Studio 4 Degrees Celsius. They also animate the later segment, Working Through Pain. Some of their better known works include Berserk, The Golden Age Arc, Transformers Animated, the Flashpoint Paradox animated film, the short-lived 2011 Thundercats show, and everyone's favorite anime, The Amazing World of Gumball. This short was written by Josh Olson. He's a screenwriter that doesn't have many writing credits to his name. Olsen has said it's based on the story from Batman 250, published in 1973, which inspired an animated series episode. Similar to both of those, this segment is about kids giving their first-hand accounts from a Batman sighting that they had during their day. This one really leans into the more urban myth aspect that Batman tends to have in his earlier days. Some of the kids emphasize his more stealthy side, one sees him as a monster, the third sees him as more of a humanoid robot. The last boy who is our eyes in this story gets his own encounter that you will get to see by the end of the segment. Crossfire is animated by production IG. They're best known for their series like Blood Plus and Psychopaths. Greg Rucka pens this one, and it's pretty in line with some of Greg Rucka's Batman work. In this, Crispus Allen and Anna Ramirez have to take the man from the first segment to Arkham Asylum, but they're caught in the middle of a crossfire between rival gangs. If you've read any of Gotham Central, this falls right in line with this, especially since Greg Rucka is one of the head creators on that series. Similar to that comic, this story is told mostly through the eyes of the police officers, and Batman is more of an outside force that gets involved near the end. Field Test is written by Jordan Goldberg and animated by B-Train. B-Train is probably best known for their work on the Dot Hack Sign franchise. Jordan Goldberg, on the other hand, is more of a producer. He tends to work a lot on Nolan films. This story focuses more on the morality of Batman. In this, Lucius creates a device that Bruce decides to use on an outing as Batman. He comes to find out that the device works too well and decides not to use it after causing a criminal to get severely injured by a bullet. Some of you may also recognize the costume that Batman has in this story. It is the one used in Arkham Knight representing this film. The costume, for whatever reason, seems to be the biggest thing that stands out from this movie for people that haven't seen it before. Whenever you look up Gotham Knight, there's a good chance that this costume is going to be one of the first pictures that pops up. And for whatever reason, 
it just seems to be the lasting legacy that this movie has. It's not a bad design by any means, but I just think it's really odd that this, of all things, is the long-standing sign of this movie. In Darkness Dwells sees David Goyer providing the story. Goyer, who is a no stranger to comic book movies, he's worked on Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, The Blade movies, and much more for better or for worse, depending on who you ask. This segment is animated by Studio Madhouse. They also animate the Deadshot short at the end of this movie. Personally, Madhouse is my favorite studio involved with this film. Big surprise, since they do a bunch of big name series in anime and animation in general. You don't even have to be a really big anime fan to have seen Madhouse's work. Chances are, if you grew up at any point between the late 90s and mid 2000s, you saw at least one thing that Madhouse has animated. They've worked on a wide variety of series, ranging from stuff like Beyblade to Trigun, Hunter x Hunter, One Punch Man, Helsing Ultimate, which is one of my favorites, and Death Note. This story is essentially about Batman doing some investigating and rescuing a hostage while conquering his fear. Again, fear being a very big aspect of Batman's character in the Nolan movies and in general. As one can imagine, since fear is a pretty big aspect of this story, the Scarecrow is the main villain. Scarecrow, like many other characters in this film, is sporting a redesigned look to fit the media. Scarecrow isn't the only Bat Rogue featured in this short, though. We also have a brief appearance by Killer Croc. Killer Croc is sporting a design that looks pretty similar to his early Bronze Age appearance. It's much more humanoid than what we tend to see nowadays. I know I mentioned him in the previous video, but the art style for this segment reminds me a lot of Mike Mignola. It falls pretty in line with stuff like the Doom that came to Gotham, or some of the covers that Mignola's done, or even his own series Hellboy. As I mentioned, Goyer has written many things, both good and bad, and there are some Goyer-isms sprinkled throughout the script in this segment. My personal favorite being... Are you in pain? I work through pain. It's pretty cheesy, but it's definitely very Batman, and it's fun in my opinion. Speaking of working through pain, that is the name of this segment. Brian Azzarello handles the story for this one. Azzarello, of course, being one of the more renowned comic writers from the last 20 years or so. It picks up where the previous one left off, with Batman being somewhat injured and stumbling around through the sewers. While Batman is trying to find a way out, we get some flashbacks to some of his training overseas. Specifically, as the name would imply, it focuses on him learning to withstand extreme pain, being mentored by a woman named Cassandra. No relation to Cassandra Kane, David Kane, or Lady Shiva, or any Batman-related characters. I think it's just a pretty fun, like, wink to the audience. I will say, out of all the vignettes, this one is probably my least favorite, but the ending shot, I feel, is one of the better ones in the entire movie. Sir, give me your hand. I... I can't. Wrapping up the movie, we have Deadshot. The art style Madhouse uses in this one falls more in line with series that they've worked on like Death Note and Helsing Ultimate. No coincidence that Deadshot and Helsing Ultimate are both very somewhat gun-focused. This story is written by Alan Burnett. Burnett has had a hand in making many of the animated DC movies going as far back as Batman Mask of the Phantasm. He's worked on The Batman, Batman Beyond, Superman the Animated Series, and basically most of DC's animated projects dating back to the 90s. This story is essentially a Batman vs. Supervillain story that could fit in almost any comic run dating back to the Bronze Age. Essentially, to sum it up, Deadshot is hired to assassinate Jim Gordon, and Batman has to stop him. Plain as that. The story is very basic and cut and dry, but it is easily my favorite out of all the vignettes in this movie. I also like the slightly reworked design that Deadshot gets in this movie. It reminds me a lot of Alucard. Or it also reminds me of Carmen Sandiego. And there you go, that's a pretty brief overview of Gotham Knight. I think it's a very interesting stepping stone between Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. It's not necessarily mandated to watch in between both movies, but it's a fun thing to just put in if you're watching the trilogy and you want something to add to it. I also think the movie stands pretty strong on its own. There's nothing in it that really requires you to see Batman Begins or The Dark Knight to understand. 
As I stated earlier, it's a very good showcase similar to what Batman Black and White is. You get to see lots of different art styles and writing approaches to Batman. If you haven't seen it and you're an anime fan or a Batman fan or even both, I highly recommend it.